In this video, we're going to show you how to install your E-Trigger electronic upgrade kit on your Titman 98 Custom Platinum Series. I'm first going to start off by removing all the parts for the kit and identifying each part. Okay, our first part is our electronic board with a capacitor, solenoid, trigger switch. And that's our electronics right there. And it also comes with a rear bolt in the kit. Now this rear bolt is a little different than the stock rear bolt that comes in the Platinum Series. Um, this is an ACT rear bolt. So if you do not have ACT in your marker, you will not be using this rear bolt. But the difference between the stock ACT rear bolt and this ACT rear bolt is the uh, depth of the uh, groove on the rear bolt. This one's a little bit deeper and it's going to allow that sear to catch a little better. Um, you can see that this rear bolt does not come with the O-ring on it, so you will be using the o-ring that comes with the gun so make sure that you remove that o-ring and put it onto your new rear bolt so we'll go ahead and set that off to the side you also have some other smaller parts here you have your armature pin this is the pin that goes between the solenoid and the underside of the sear and this is actually what causes the sear to trip you have your sear it's gonna be really hard to see but there's actually a small pinhole right there in the center and that's going to allow it just to rock like that. Um, your standard sear, it'll actually slide forward and pivot or rock back and forth when the gun's being fired. So there is a difference there between the sears. Then you have your magnet which goes underneath the solenoid and will help pull the solenoid back down to its original position for the next shot. Then you also have your lighter sear spring for the egret. Last but not least, you have your owner's manual. It goes over uh, some troubleshooting, also goes over all the programming, and also the installation, which I'll be showing you. So we're going to go ahead and set the manual off to the side, kind of get these parts a little off to the side here, and we'll go ahead and start disassembling our marker. Now, you're going to need a 564 Salen wrench to remove your grip, which we're going to do right now. And you will also be needing a 1 8 Allen wrench, a hammer, um, either a punch or a uh, flathead screwdriver. And I'll show you what that's for here in a minute. But we're first going to take this grip off and then from there we're going to go ahead and remove all our receiver bolts alright now that we have our receiver removed we can actually remove our trigger guard and I like to remove the safety and all the receiver screws because what we're going to do here is we're going to knock out the battery door on your receiver. Now you can kind of see that you have this shape here that looks like a 9 volt battery. That's going to be the part that we're going to knock out using the hammer and the punch or a flathead screwdriver. If you don't have a punch and if you're not sure what a punch looks like this is the punch that I typically use but what you're going to do is you're just going to go around the edges here and just knock that out. If you don't have a punch, you can use a flathead screwdriver and just kind of follow the edge and knock it out cleanly. So we're going to go ahead and do that right now. And like I said, you want to start at the edge and work your way around.
and you can see that that punched out really clean. I mean, you have a little bit of paint that chipped off, but that's okay. Your grip's actually going to cover that up. But you can see how clean that knocked right out. So from there, we'll go ahead and set our receiver back off to the side, and we'll get to working on the main section of the gun here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to remove our end cap just by pulling up on it and then just removing our drive spring and our ACT spring. We're going to go ahead and remove our sear and our sear spring. And then I'm going to go ahead and remove the rear bolt. You have your cocking handle, your ACT spring cup, your rear bolt o-ring, and like I said before, you're going to have to remove this because you're going to continue to use this on the new rear bolt. And then we're going to go ahead and remove our trigger. Now one thing you always want to make sure you do when you remove your trigger is you have to remove the trigger return slide. This is the little metal bracket that's on the back side of the trigger. It is a spring-loaded bracket. You can see how it springs back out once you push on it. From there, you're just going to take that pin, you're going to push it through using a small screwdriver or any tool that you can push that pin out with. And then you can see all the parts here. You got the spring, the slider, and then you also have the small pin that retains all that assembly. So we'll go ahead and set that off to the side.